Hi, Nancy. Hi, Christopher. I feel like I'm on PBS or something. <laughs> um, so we have this opportunity to talk to everybody about the sabbatical. And first I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the mechanics of the sabbatical. When exactly is your last day with us? And what will you be doing? Okay, well, thank you. Um, as, as you know, Sunday, August 28th will be my last Sunday here. And we will uh, all reaffirm our baptismal promises together and have a party afterwards, hopefully involving water, because the theme of the, of the sabbatical for all of us is uh, renewing joy, baptized by water and the spirit. So we'll be thinking about our baptismal promises and sort of through the theme of water. And later in that week, I'm going to leave and go down to New Jersey and start with a silent retreat day with a friend of mine who's oh, going to launch me into uh, launch me into sabbatical headspace, which nice. will be good. And then a month at the Jersey Shore. Now, is this the place you normally go to? The place I normally go. So. Um, Church of the Redeemer in Longport, New Jersey, and okay. I'll take two Sundays there with them um, and just enjoy that beautiful setting. And family will come and just start off uh, the sabbatical with some rest and some Atlantic Ocean. Beautiful. And it's nice to start off with some place familiar. Familiar, right. A really familiar place that um, my kids love and I love and just be good to gather everybody for that time. And then the, the bigger excitement starts um, at the beginning of October. My sister Susan and I are going to fly to Edinburgh okay. and then do a pilgrimage down to the holy island of Lindisfarne, which is a tidal island off of, in the North Sea, so in the northeast coast of, of England, where when the tide is out, pilgrims for centuries have been walking across the sand onto the island. And it's the site of, uh, a monastery is no longer there, but it's the site of a monastery where St. Cuthbert, one of my little spiritual guides, um, was there. In, he died in 687. So it's been a long time since he's been there, but the spirit is still there. So when you say you're doing a pilgrimage there, does that mean like you have to walk without shoes from Edinburgh all the way down there? What is it? I'm <laughs> well, we're going to put take, it in my head. Okay, so we're going to take a train from Edinburgh to um, to a town called Berwick on Tweed, which is okay. the closest town you can get to the island. And then it may be walking without shoes or walking in wellies across the wet sand. Wow. And I also actually also realized that I needed to buy a backpack because in order to get your stuff over there, you, you have, have to carry, carry it. it right? nice. so, I have a, so I have not a rolling suitcase kind of thing. Not a rolling suitcase thing. kind of thing, right. So um, so small, um, minimalist okay. uh, pilgrimage experience uh, walking across the sand and we'll spend uh, two nights on the island, which is great because people do this as a day trip. It's kind of a famous place. But if you stay overnight, none of all the day trippers are gone and then nice. you're there, you know, in a very peaceful quiet place. Beautiful. So I'm looking forward to that. So we're and then we're gonna go down to Durham in England, uh, to Durham Cathedral, which is which is where um, St. Cuthbert is buried, also where the Venerable Bede is buried. A beautiful cathedral and we'll we'll actually be there on a Sunday so we can do Sunday worship in, nice. in the cathedral. Really looking forward to that. And then back to Edinburgh and back home. And in the middle of October, I'm going to go out to Pacific Grove, California, which is right by Monterey. Where the famous Where's that in California? So south of, so two hours south of San Francisco, okay. and uh, where the famous Monterey Aquarium is. And um, I've rented a little Airbnb where I can walk to the beach, walk to the town, walk, walk to the aquarium, the walk to the Trader oh, Joe's. Yes. So I'm okay. not going to have a car. I'm just going to be uh, on foot, and maybe I'll rent a bicycle and just enjoy the beautiful Pacific Ocean. Okay. So we have the Atlantic, and yep. we have the Pacific. And we have the North Sea in England. And the North Sea in England. Right. Yeah. And then Thanksgiving will be in Baltimore, I think, with my family. Okay. And not too sure about the rest of it yet. Although I know that the very last week in December, I'm going to be up at Barbara C. Harris. Beautiful. Um, the, the body of water there is called Otter Lake, and it will probably be frozen. But that's one of my favorite places to go, and I'll be on 
silent retreat there that week between Christmas and New Year's before coming back here. Wonderful. And your first Sunday back with us is January 8th? January 8th. I'll be back in the office January 3rd, I think, because the 2nd is our the holiday for, for the first. For the first. Mm -hmm. So I'll be back in the office on the 3rd. And on that day, on the 8th, it's it's actually Baptism of Our Lord Sunday, Sunday. conveniently. Yeah. Go and figure. One of the really fun things I hope will be fun for everybody is I'm going to be collecting water from all of these different sacred places where I'm going and we'll bring that back. And I have little glass bottles with little cork stoppers for everyone who wants one to take over this time and to collect water from your special place. And so when we come back together on January 8th, Everybody will bring their water, we'll pour it into the baptismal font, and we'll renew our baptismal vows together using all of this water from these sacred places. It's really beautiful symbolism. Yeah, it is. It's actually a tradition that comes from the from the Unitarian Church okay. called mingling of the waters. But you know, reason why we can't borrow with our holy envy, right? yeah, with our holy envy, and, yeah. and do it. So. So we'll have those, actually Beth has those bottles now. If anybody um, is getting ready to go to their special place, you should stop by the office and, and pick up yours. Um, and we'll also have them available on August 28th at the party for people to take. Great. Now, I've never been through a sabbatical before. And so I just want, you know, clear expectations. How often are we supposed to contact you while you're away? Well, Christopher, that would be never. Okay. <laughs> just, just making that clear, you know. No, I mean, no, um, this is a good break. Yeah, so, so, the, so the purpose of a sabbatical, which I, I put in the window article um, that, that came out uh, recently, it, the purpose of the sabbatical is really rest for everybody. So it's for me to really be, to not be reading the emails and getting the messages so that I can, you know, be in a clear headspace. And really for the congregation and for you all to also sort of rest from me, you know, to, to, to look at our, for, for you all to sort of consider and discern around your baptismal promises and how are you living them out and doing that with, with your voice and leadership and with Kathy George who's coming to help with her voice and leadership rather than my voice speaking into it. Just, so just a little time out for everybody um, and the idea that we're all renewed, that we're all renewed together when there's, when there's space. So obviously, if there's you know serious emergency, you and I will be in touch. Right. But um, but I but I won't be um, I won't be checking my my Trinity email at all. Or or and you're gonna I'm gonna forward all my voice messages Come to right your to number. Me. Yeah. yeah. And I also want to say, Christopher. I mean, I am so grateful that you're the person who's here now Thank because you. I can leave without one ounce of concern or worry that everything would be just fine. I mean, you're, you, you've totally got this and so grateful that you, you know, that you identified Kathy as somebody who could also help. And so between the two of you and the wonderful lay leadership team that we have in place, um, this is, good to go, we're right? good to go. Good yeah, to go. it's going to be fabulous. What's the hope for, what are you hoping for yourself for this about? I really need some rest. And I, I mean, we all do, right? It's been, what a season it's been. But I'm blessed that the timing of this came through this way. And, and also, we forgot to mention at the beginning, this is a, we, we applied and got a grant. We got a $50,000 yeah. grant from the Lilly Endowment to do this. So this doesn't cost the congregation anything. Um, and so it's a huge gift to me to have the time. That was a lot of work on your behalf, on David. Right. I mean, we, right, but you don't. But you don't win if you don't play. Right. You can't win if you don't play. So I'm pleased that we took the time to to write the grant and and to and to put it together. So um, so it's the, so this is a gift to all of us. You know, the money, the time, your leadership. Um, my hope for myself is is some rest and and some time to really connect with my family. I mean, one of the challenges of of this vocation, as you know, is that um, it does take time away from family. It, it, it's, it's, it's an all-consuming thing that we do willingly and with gratitude for God's call, and it does affect the people we love. Absolutely. And so this time um, 
is not just not just pure rest for me, but just a chance to reconnect with some people I'm close to that I haven't been able to spend um, quality time with in, in quite a while. Really cool. So um, I'm hoping to do that. I'm also, also hoping to do a little bit of writing. And um, some of you may remember, I was, a, I was a bit inspired by this book called Beholding Paradise, which are photographs that, uh, that Thomas Merton took sort of later in his ministry. So I'm going to be taking photographs. Nice. Did you get a special camera? Are you doing it with uh, your iPhone? I'm or? doing it with my iPhone Fantastic. because there's pretty much no better camera good, than, good, good camera. than the camera out of the iPhone. So um, I'm going to be taking photos. And part of what I hope to bring back to you all is um, a curated selection okay. of, You're of some of the better ones. Like a three-hour slideshow? No, okay. no. Um, we, <laughs> we actually put into the we actually put into the grant proposal uh, money for for me to print and mat a certain number of photos that can be displayed here in the parish hall. And that is goes along with a photo project that I that I believe you all will be doing okay. called God's Beloved. Um, we have some professional photographers in our congregation, thanks be to God. And hopefully, if it all if it all comes together, right? Everything's provisional, but if it all comes together. Um, you all will have the opportunity to have your portrait taken, um, and money is in money was in the grant as well for those to be printed and mounted and shown also in the in the parish hall. So we'll have a little photo show when we're back in January or February, depending on what's going on with the photo gallery here. But this just this idea. You all know I talk a lot about how our everybody's name is beloved in God's eyes. That's one of my you know, the two sermons that I have, that's yeah. one of them. Um, and we say, we do a lot with words. You know, I preach all the time. You and I, we write, we preach. Everything has to do with words. And one of the challenges that I've challenged myself with for the sabbatical is to think about how does the word, right, with a capital W, come through in images instead of with the talking and the writing. Right. So I would just love to come back. It would be so joyful to come back and see all your faces in real life and then see all these beautiful portraits. Um, you know, one opportunity would be to use those pictures as the new directory pictures as well. Okay. You know, so instead of just quick snaps, that would be, you know, our capturing our, right? capturing our Capturing our belovedness. Yeah. Um, what's your hope for us at Trinity Church for this sabbatical time? Well, I think sort of what I just said that that um, that we that we each be reminded of our unique belovedness in God's eyes, and that together in this community of faith, um, each of us brings our particular gifts and our particular belovedness to the party, and that all are welcome. Um, I hope that through through worship and through some of the outreach projects that are scheduled and through some of the offerings that, that Kathy may offer and the, um, uh, the sacred ground conversations that are going to happen, that, that, that each person will take the time specifically to, to ask, how am I living out my baptismal promises? What does my baptism mean in this place, in this time? Um, the book we, just, book we just talked about a few minutes ago um, about Thomas Merton, you know, he asked the question: How do we? How do each of us authentically? He used the word descent, but authentically express faith and hope and love. Mm. Because your way of doing it is different mm. than my way; mm. is different than someone else's way. And so, we're not called to do all the ways or be all the things, but we are called to to stand up for justice and stand up for love and stand up for Jesus in our particular authentic way. And so that discernment, I hope, will will happen in this season. Beautiful. Finally, is there anything we didn't cover that you would like to say to us? I'm going to miss you so much. Oh, we're going to miss you too. <laughs> That's a beautiful way to end this conversation. One of the reasons that we wanted to do this video for you all is we realized that you see us up at the altar on Sundays together, but we're not talking to each other, or we're not supposed to be. Um, <laughs> and you never see the 
Yeah, you never I just get to see us chat. together yeah. laughing and chatting about things. Um, so sometimes it's sabbatical, sometimes it's knitting. Right. Yeah. Sometimes it's stuff. theology or whatever. Absolutely. So I'm Sometimes just, it's about cats. And sometimes it's about cats. Yeah. He has a really <laughs> special <laughs> cat. Yeah. So thank okay. you for asking the questions. And if anybody has questions that we haven't answered or things that you want to ask us, um, please don't hesitate to reach out um, to either me or to Christopher. Absolutely. All right. Thank you.